People rarely cross cultural boundaries in significant ways. What should motivate us to do so? Acts 8 records a cross-cultural encounter where Philip is called by God as a witness that Jesus, the Son of God, is the basis of true meaning and purpose. Today's key verse reads, Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. Acts chapter 8, verse 35. When believers started to be persecuted in Jerusalem, Philip, like many new Christ followers, fled that city. He went to Samaria and began sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ there. Philip's speaking was accompanied by miraculous signs from God, and people from diverse walks of life turned to Christ because of his words. During this successful evangelistic adventure, Philip responded to a prompting from God to leave the success of the city for a special assignment on a desert road. The persecution that caused Philip to leave Jerusalem took him and the good news of Christ to new people and cultures. In Samaria, his preaching was well received by the crowds there, but he left that success to travel to a desert road leading to Gaza because he felt God's leading. There he met an Ethiopian who was traveling back to his country. When the Spirit told Philip to go and join up with the chariot, he obeyed. As he came near, he heard the eunuch reading Isaiah. It was customary in the ancient world to read aloud, even when alone. This was especially the case with lengthy scrolls where there were no separation between words they had to be read syllable by syllable to detect the word divisions. Philip asked the eunuch, Do you understand what you are reading? While Philip's religious upbringing might have dismissed this man from being worthy of God's grace and mercy, Philip acknowledged God's saving work was for all people, even Gentiles and eunuchs, by engaging him in a conversation. The eunuch admits he won't be able to understand the text unless someone guides him. Guide literally means to lead down or along a road. Thus, the eunuch invited Philip to get in and sit with him under the assumption that he would be able to explain the passage in Isaiah. Traditionally, the Jews applied the concepts of suffering and humiliation in Isaiah 52 to the nation of Israel or the unrighteous Gentile nations. Thus, the idea of a suffering Messiah was not a common idea among Jews of this time. The deeper meaning of this passage, then, must have been unclear to the eunuch. While in Jerusalem, the eunuch would have been excluded from full participation in temple worship. If so, the passage he was reading, Isaiah 53 verses 7 and 8, would have resonated with him because it spoke about a person who was bruised, cut, humiliated, and would have no descendants. The eunuch wanted to know who this person was. Was it Isaiah, the Jewish people, or someone else? Philip used this passage and many others to share the good news about Jesus Christ and God's redemptive plan of salvation for everyone. For someone who might have felt marginalized and excluded from full access to God's presence, this certainly would have been good news. Philip carried out Jesus' commandment to take the gospel everywhere and to everyone. His clear understanding of scripture gave him the ability to share the gospel with large groups. He also was comfortable sitting with one individual of a different race and stature to explain the love of God. This is a skill that all Christians can seek God's grace to attain. It's a gift worth rejoicing about then and now. Here's our lesson. Sharing the gospel often starts by listening and learning where others are in their understanding of scripture, God, or core Bible teachings. On our jobs, in our communities, or while shopping at the store, it's easy to ignore those we see as different, missing opportunities to share the good news. We become Christ's hands and feet when we are willing to cross boundaries for the gospel's sake. Heavenly Father, fill our hearts with what we truly desire, for who we truly seek is you.